In the first of these videos, we learned that engineers uh, are professionals and that they have certain professional responsibilities. In the second, we learned that the engineer's most important professional responsibility is ensuring the safety of the public. Here we'll go on to another important uh, responsibility of engineers, uh, that is avoiding conflict of interest. Let me start with a story about how you should advise the committee. Let's suppose you are an engineer who works for the state government, but you hope to leave soon for a higher paying job with Bucknell Corporation. You are advising a committee that is considering three bids for constructing a new government building. One bid comes from Bucknell, and you think that Bucknell's bid, bid is the best. Should you advise the committee to accept Bucknell's bid? Why or why not? At this point, pause the video, talk to uh, at least one other person sitting near you, and um, discuss this case among yourselves for about five minutes. Welcome back. The question is whether you can advocate a decision that benefits your next, next career move. If you have an offer already from Bucknell, then you would definitely have a conflict of interest, and you should recuse yourself, that is, excuse yourself from participating in the decision. Without an offer, you still have a potential conflict of interest. If you convince the committee to accept Bucknell's bid, and after Bucknell gets the contract, you go to work for Bucknell, then both you and the state government would, lo would look very bad. At a minimum, you should be honest with the committee, but ideally, you should recuse yourself or excuse yourself. Let's talk a little bit more about this conflict of interest situation. When does a conflict of interest exist? Um, many of us have conflicting interests all the time. So, for example, you transferred from the University of Michigan to the University of Illinois. Uh, you have a conflicting interest about whom to root for when the two universities play basketball against each other. That's not really what we're talking about here. The phrase conflict of interest is an idiom applying to a certain situation in which you have a person in a position, uh, generally a professional, who, who is exercising judgment. And you have people who are depending on that judgment. Um, furthermore, uh, that professional is in a situation where there are special interests that might interfere with the exercise of that judgment. Uh, these interests might be financial interests, family connections, or prior relationships. For example, uh, suppose uh, you're an engineer who is recommending uh, the purchase of parts for your employer, and you happen to know a manufacturer who makes uh, parts that you think are the best parts for the job, and uh, your brother actually works there. Or perhaps you have a significant financial interest in that manufacturer, or perhaps you recently worked at that manufacturer and came to your new position. In those cases, you probably have a conflict of interest because there are these financial or family or relationship connections uh, that might uh, interfere with your uh, judgment in this case. An academic example is where a graduate student is supervised by a professor, but that student also works in the professor's consulting firm. The judgment of the professor in making decisions about the student's academic progress could be colored by the employer-employee relationship. So why is it that being in a conflict of interest situation seems unethical? After all, why not specify parts made by uh, your brother's company? Somebody should benefit, why not your brother? Or even more um, significantly, suppose uh, you are an engineer and uh, you work at a company A and you uh, also moonlight at company B, um, maybe doing different jobs. Uh, but if, uh, but uh, even if A and B are direct competitors, you're not working on similar kind of work. Why does this seem like uh, a problem? After all, um, a janitor could work at one hotel during the day and then uh, walk across the street and work at a competing hotel uh, at night. Well, again, the difference um, is that people depend on the engineer for professional judgment. These other relationships could uh, bias that judgment is a potential bias um, uh, that the interests of uh, financial f or family or other interests could uh, cause a bias and, uh, in the engineer's judgment and that people would not be able to rely on that. There's also the problem of perceived deception. If clients or colleagues don't know about these relationships, um, they uh, would feel that you're hiding something, that you're not being completely candid. And finally, perhaps the most important is the loss of trust. Michael Davis at the Illinois Institute of Technology compares conflict of interest to uh, dirt in a gauge. 
it doesn't mean that the uh, reading of the gauge will be wrong, but simply that because of the dirt, we can't rely on the reading that the gauge is giving. Similarly, uh, because you have these financial or family interests, it doesn't mean that your engineering judgment will be wrong, but simply that people will not be able to rely on it, that your judgment will not be trustworthy. And trust is the cornerstone of all professional relationships. So that's why even the appearance of a conflict of interest also causes a loss of trust. And even in the appearance of conflict of interest, you have to be very careful about um, the, uh, whether your judgment uh, could be trusted by other people. So conflict of interest is a pretty common uh, ethical problem, and there are uh, fairly common solutions. The, most, uh, the simplest um, is recusal, that is formally excusing yourself if someone else, else can fulfill that role that you would ordinarily have fulfilled. Um, recusal is um, uh, pretty common. When I was at the National Science Foundation, uh, I, was, um, I spent a year, I spent $5.9 million uh, in 1990 to 91, but the National Science Foundation takes uh, conflict of interest very seriously and whenever there was a proposal from my institution, University of Illinois, or from recent co-authors, or from my former students, I had to recuse myself. I had to uh, give that proposal to another program director ha to handle. I got to uh, recuse myself from lots and lots of work. On the other hand, it was a two-way street, so uh, other program directors gave me their proposals when they had to recuse themselves. Another thing you can do in a conflict of interest is disclosure. Full disclosure has the advantage of being candid, and uh, nurturing trust by showing that you are being uh, completely honest. Finally, if uh, uh, in some cases we may have to manage a conflict of interest. If nobody else can substitute for the professional, uh, then the conflict of interest has to be managed. For example, if a professor supervises a graduate student who works for the professor's company um, and, and nobody else can uh, fulfill that role as the primary advisor, the university might appoint a co-advisor or ensure that there are enough senior persons around uh, to oversee the student's work so that the student uh, doesn't uh, have the problem of being answerable only to the student's uh, major research professor. So in summary, conflict of interest uh, happens frequently whenever a professional has, uh, uh, is exercising judgment and there are interests that may interfere with the judgment. Uh, conflict of interest is a problem because it renders the judgment perhaps less trustworthy and there are ways to deal with a conflict of interest through recusal uh, disclosure and sometimes just managing the problem.